as far as what's happening with the climate now, well, we can already see. We have a perfect example of how climate system tipping points work in the Arctic now. Uh, it's clear that the Arctic sea ice is beginning to recede very rapidly. Last year, was the loss was much greater than any previous year. And because the planet is now out of energy balance, there's more energy coming in from sunlight than there is heat going out, it's clear that we're going to lose all the ice in the Arctic. So this should be the warning sign that people need in order to see that humans are taking over the uh, future of the, the the Earth's climate. And we don't want to pass other more dangerous tipping points like the stability of ice sheets because sea level rise of several meters, which is not unusual on paleoclimate timescales, would be disastrous. We can clearly see that we're putting pressure on a lot of uh, species, uh, animal and plant species, as the climate zones shift. And because if we look at the Earth's history, when there have been warmings of several degrees Celsius, which is what we'll get if we follow business as usual, the Earth lost uh, more than half of its species. And although others came into being, it took hundreds of thousands of years for that to happen. So it's not a path that we want to go down. If we want to preserve the sort of planet that we've been living on the last 10,000 years, we've got to um, reduce emissions. One thing that has become clear in just the past few years is that our thoughts that we may be able to go to 450 parts per million for CO2 or even higher were really over estimating what we could live with. In fact, and perhaps it shouldn't be surprising, because the Holocene, the last 10,000 years, CO2 was only about 280 parts per million. And if we want to keep the climate fairly similar to what it's been in the last several thousand years, then we can't allow CO2 to go too far away from that. So what I've done is looked at a number of different phenomena, and all of these tell us that we had better not let CO2 stay for a long period of time above 350 parts per million. And that may even be too high. I'm just saying that we have to get back to at least that level. And it's going to take a while to do that. And by the time we get back there, we may realize, well, it's got to really be 300 or something like that. But we, at any, the important point is that it's less than what we have now, which is 385 parts per million. So it requires dramatic changes in policy in order for us to achieve that. There's a tremendous potential in energy efficiency. Um, we could reduce uh, energy use by 50 percent um, in, in uh, the energy required for households and buildings and vehicles. Um, so, but in order to get to that, I think we need to have a carbon price. Now, that means a tax, which the public will not easily accept. So I think the way to make it work is to have a carbon tax and 100% dividend, which means you return all of this money to the public on a monthly basis. You could just deposit it in their bank accounts or in their debit card. Um, and that way, the people who do better than average in terms of trying to reduce their carbon footprint, they will actually make money. And it will dry, it will spur the economy because there will be innovations. People find ways to reduce energy use and they will be able to sell that technology. So that's the kind of thing I think rather than having the government take the tax and then decide where they're going to spend that, which the public is tired of this. Um, you know, lobbyists deciding where taxes money is going to be spent give it all back to the public, and then we could solve the problem. Part of the reason that it's difficult to get uh, the policies that are needed is that the public has been misinformed to some degree by special interests. It's somewhat analogous to the way that tobacco manufacturers uh, dealt with the uh, lung cancer problem. They Act, they pretended that it wasn't really a problem and they would pay those scientists who thought that it wasn't a problem to speak out. Um, in the case of climate change, there have been documented uh, with some of the major energy companies have uh, paid for 
um, advertisements and scientists saying that there's not really a problem. I, I'm trying to draw attention to that because, you know, these CEOs are are human beings who have children and grandchildren. So I want them. I want them to think about this. That's why I said I think they're committing a crime against humanity, um, because they could cause the response to be delayed by decades and we could pass tipping points with uh, grave consequences. So I just want them to think about that.